this morning guys I'm at the wonderful Ulli Reservoir and uh, we don't cards for a while to come here but don't be pegged to any three there's a match on tomorrow so uh, it's matched up next weekend shall I say so I thought I'd come and have a stop down this morning see if I can do much so the plan is just to go straight out probably 30 meter 50 and then so on and so forth until I find bikes and then I'll chop and change just to how close I need to come back in and so on and so forth feeder fishing anyway but yeah I'm going to set up and guys if you've not got one already and you like your feeder fishing or you just like being out there get yourself one of these because absolutely awesome bit of kit long legs on them and it means i ain't got to play fish in shallow water and it gets me that little bit closer out as well so yeah perfect bit of kit that. If anyone fishing with absolute station best thing to do is if you're new to getting one don't put it straight out there and then put your box on it and try and adjust it if you've got the absolute station the leg base it normally sits comfortable in between each of those rails at just on notch number three on either side so if you're going one do it that way so notch number three feet are sat in them rails nice on either side make sure you always have these to the front or back but mainly to the front preference and i think that you want to be holding this down as much as possible most of your weight's going to be on this part of your box so you want to make sure that anything that can still move like this bit, lock it down with feet clamps. And uh, so yeah, notch number three. Let's go tight there. So there you are, it's in. So nice and level. I like it. Just sat on top of water on each corner. So as you can see, each leg's longer than other, especially that front left. Just because it contours at front at peg, that's all. But I can't go any further out because it drops another foot about another six inch out. So quite a quick drop off there look you can see it just disappears um that's pretty much ready to go so nice and level always gee all your blocking wheels another quick check just to make sure last thing you want is to get all your gear on it and then one fail so always have a quick nip round it and have a look don't try and be superman and go too far out do what you need platforms intended to get you in that little bit more water it makes playing fish easier you've got plenty of keep net space you don't want to be just trying to go as far out as you can because you're closer to the fish yeah that's all in your casting so for it's worth it's a awesome bit of kit that get waded up if you're coming as well if you don't want to be sat there i mean it's 2.5 degrees today so it's a cold one you don't want to be going in or head off reels without any proper gear on so i mean it's still going to be cold don't get me wrong but 99 percent of what's going to make you any cold is going to be water on your skin but that's platform ready i chuck box on and lock it up with front lockers and that's my box on so again make sure your feet are lined up in the middle of each rail you don't want one to be hanging off and then it slip off otherwise you've had it uh, i mean if it's 55 degrees then you've not it'd be quite nice but Another tip, get your box, drag it all the way to the back so this foot is touching this bit here. And then you want to pull this forward and lock it in with that locking wheel there. That means that your box is not only on there, on rails evenly, but it's locked up as much as it can be. So it just saves any, any more. Well, you're just trying to eliminate as many working parts as possible. Even on cast, you don't want to be punching out a 60 plus cast stood on your foot plate and and things start going wonky well that's about as basic as that gets i mean you've seen these advertised and preston lads have done a couple of videos on them can't really argue much more than that but just for little niggly bits that people don't see from certain angles that's pretty much all it is quite simple rock solid and then once you've got your box on, first thing I always do, and always tell kids, put your side tray on, first things first, even when you're on a peg on bank, put your side tray on, then that way, 
if you come up, put your essentials in like that. So feed the rest, wallet, keys, phone if you're not filming. And it just gets all that bit out of the way nice and safe. So got a large storm shield, put my wallet and keys in there. That way if it rains, I can just shut this a little bit, It'll keep rain off it as well. And then anything I want to be putting on my box, I'm just all my side tray ready. The cloth, neck warmer, let me feed the rest in there. Get them out of the way, my painkillers, go bad back. Uh, it just saves you coming backwards and forwards, keeps you out of water as much as you can. And then everything's ready, then start putting on. And you can come back, get your bait prepped, and get ready. Right, so, just about to chuck it out with your lead. Not going with any distant sticks because I don't know this area of the venue. Uh, peg 23. It drops off quite quick here, so I'm guessing there's going to be some water out there. Um, three quarter ounce bomb. So I'm going to chuck it out in intervals, probably 20 meter, 35, uh, 30, 35, up to somewhere probably near 40, 45. Uh, and that's with 3.8 distance master um, and then I've also got a 4.2 if well, I need to go any further really it's not obligatory it's just personal preference intensity reels O10 braid and uh, well I feel right up bottom with this and uh, that'll give me a good idea of what I'm fishing I'm guessing it's going to be a bit silty far out and that rest of it's going to be like grom on which is mainly just gravel you can't see it so, we'll have a chop, see what we can find. The Revolution Bait CG Green. Force into a chop. That's what we want to do. Start with some form. It's really cold today, so I don't want to be putting too much out there. I don't want to be making too much of it. It's quite a figure they've mixed. So I've got them water at a time. Mix it up like you would any other ground beef. If you're only doing a bit, there's no need for it to really be. So you can put the joiners out there. Really just doing a bit added. Do as you can first. Get a bank. As much as you can out. There you go. Nice fluffy mix. Plug in a window feeder. Or even capping off the bay truck feeder. Three particles in. Spot on. I normally do skimmer and bream dark. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fish GG Green pure today. Just make up the mix straight away. I've not fished here before, so I'm going to go with this, then I can add to it where necessary. So, bang all that into one container, hand on floor, ready to go. Alright, we'll get some fish.
It's, a, it's not a nice win, that one, is it? No. In peg, if you like, with the steps. No, here, look, no, sorry, in on the corner. Yeah. The first one that looks proper open at the back and everything. Yeah, where you see that? Yes, that, yeah. that, that's peg 12. You want to be aiming for that, mate. And then you've got the best of both worlds, because 24 is producing fish, and this is, so you, nobody's going to fish today. So you're sort of in the middle. I had 46, I had the record, and then Steve Whitfield fucking watched me at nearly 80 pound off. We had four, over 400 pound of bream caught in one match. And that was Goose who's just been down. Sir Paul Hardy. There's a bit of a saint on here from what I've seen, so. Not going to ignore any friendly advice from him. So, it's running you through, makes me for a start. Nice and simple. I always sweat my maggots. So, chuck them in a tub with lid on, sweat them out. Um, and then what I do is, for a bit of flavouring in, or you just sprinkle some ground bait on. I've got some fish in GG Green. Just sprinkle some GG Green on. This helps take away some moisture, but then as they do start to dry out, they absorb a lot of what's in this ground bait worked well for me i've always done it don't know why i think it come off the back of one day uh, just leaving maggots for too long and i had to quickly dry them out um and i've always swore by it uh casters some of these are a bit shot cost from other day as well yeah uh, i'll pick all loose ones out some buoyant ones can be ideal for putting on hook and then two parts exactly the same mix and all i want to do is leave one sort of neutral and then other one just putting a few loose offerings for when I'm baiting up. A few micros. Again, you don't want many. It's winter. You want to be keeping it nice and simple. And that is about all I need. Ground bait will do all the work I need it to. Them loose offerings will keep the fish there. Just grubbing about for when I go out with it length on afterwards. But these pellets, uh, maggots, and then all tiny particles within the GD green, they're what going to hold my fish there grubbing about. I don't want to just pile a massive handful in each because I can't take it out. I've ruined my initial bait up mix uh, and I'm not learning anything. I could be waiting twice as long for a bite then. So if I'm getting regular bites and I start getting quick indications that there's fish there, I'll put my feed or I'll even, using a window feeder, I'll put in a few loose maggots or pellets and then I'll cap it off with my mix just to get a few more in. But ideally I want to try and leave that as alone, leave that alone as much as possible. So, I've shown you this before, but double red on hook, uh, one top, one tail, and then wind the feeder. And your first chuck, I'm just going to chuck a couple of them in there like that, a couple of loose maggots, and then cap a chocolate in my mix. Again, micros and a few maggots as well as my ground beef mix. So, I'm not going to put too much in, I'm just going to plug it enough that it sits my thumb in, and then uh, chuck that out. And that should just keep recharging that swim every time I come in and out on top of what I've already put in at start. So, chuck that out. We uh, double red on. Let's see if we can uh, see if we can get one. And stopwatch. If anyone's got one, I'll always use it. Mine's seeing better days, but that's that first chuck in. And I can chuck this down here, and then I can monitor my bites and see how quick my fish are coming. Then, so because I'm fishing on a slope, then it's deep i mean really deep off at pegs here uh, goose says at about eight meter ten meter you've got just as much drop so eight ten meter drop 
Uh, I'm at 20 meter, I think. I've got, I've got a counter about eight. Uh, we're three quarter out the bottom. So this is why the tip looks like this. So I'll try and zoom in on that. Yeah, look. So bites, goose said, um, when you're going, I'll just pull line, look, and your bites are actually going downwards because there's that much of a drop off, your bites go down. So position my rod a bit higher up off its surface than what I'd normally prefer. And uh, I can just watch me tip the rod down to its surface then. Huh? So the first one's been in nearly 50 a minute. So I'm going to, uh, I think I've 50 a minute intervals. And see how we go that way. As opposed to leaving it out too long to start with. And then as soon as I start going any bites, I can then lengthen it. So you're feeding them off. I thought I had a knock just before I picked phone up to video it. But... So I call that 15 minutes. So I pull in and chuck a fresh one out. I thought I had a little knock then. I'm a minute of them in 15 mark, but I had a small knock before. I've just had another one. We don't want to go dragging feeders out to swim if there's fish there, so just going to leave it that bit of time. I think it was a small bit of plug empty to be fair. Well, I'll recharge. So that's now my third chuck. Uh, just start at stopwatch again. Um, that one went to about 20 minutes because I had, a, I had a small knot before 15 minute mark so I thought I'd wait a few minutes and at 16, 17 I had another small knock. The plan was if nothing progressed I was just going to lift into it to see if there were small fish on but there was nothing on. Uh, so this is my third chuck. Uh, same spot, same mix, just putting a few loose maggots into the window feeder before I cap it off. And I've got a long long line. Um, about 50 meter. If I don't get much more on this, I'll use these casts as a sort of extra extra baiting up tactic. I'll go on my long line, and then if any fish move over what I've put on this line already, then I can come back on this one afterwards and see how we go. But just keeping it nice and neutral to start with, keeping it simple. Don't want to be putting too much in because again, I've only had a couple of small knocks. They could be big feeding fish, or they could be tiny small fish. Away at up bait. So I'm uh, sit this one out and see if anything progresses. But so far, so good. It, you know, I'm getting signs, which is great. Um, and just going to add that this place is absolutely picturesque. So I don't live too far from here. Good, uh, good 10 minutes away in car, 10 15 minutes. See that red liner, small liner, so I'm fishing uh, sort of 54 centimetre up length. So there's plenty of hook length for fish to pick up if it actually dislodges my feeder or gives me any sort of indication up through my shot lead onto my main line. So I've got to bear that in mind as well. I don't want to be fishing too close to the feeder because I'm fishing on a Sort of not a steep slope, but a decent slope. Any feed that I put in through feeder will naturally just make its way down that slope. So I don't want to be fishing much shorter, and I really don't want to be going any longer. I think where I'm at is about spot on. But I'll um, persevere and see how we get on. But again, this place absolutely stunning. Feed a fishing mecca. Just had Mr. Paul Hardy, old goose come round, gave me some pointers. And um, I mean, even without much action on tip, it's just a really nice place to sit. So if anyone's local or, or you're looking for somewhere new, definitely get up here. It's absolutely spot on. Right, while I'm waiting for that to go. Uh, this is my feed mix, which I'm using for my feeder. Uh, again, there's micros in there, a couple of maggots, and that is it, nothing else. So, done a few casts on it, not a lot left in the bottom of there now, so what I'm going to do is, just go 
quickly make some more up. So, chuck an handful in like that. Again, you only fill it wind, wind up a bit at a time. The only small wind feeders. A few micros. Uh, a few maggots, and then this time I'm just going to chuck in a couple of casters as well. Sorry, I'm trying to balance everything in. Let me chuck them in there. Right? So a couple of casters from the bottom of there, and chuck them in. It's good to mix up, and they can be fast, festering away in there. And that's my mix ready for when I come back in. So now all I've done is I've added a few casters into the mix. Only a few. So if I do start getting bites or things start changing up too, I know that if casters might have been the reason for change, I can start adding a, a, a bit more afterwards. So chuck them back in there and uh, keep watching for that going around. So that one is. Yeah, that one's on. I left it a bit longer. 21 minutes that's been out there. That's on. Bit skimmery that. Bit skimmery. Now the ones you want. Proper breeding that one. Right. Stopwatch reset. Straight back in. Another bream, and that one is six minutes in. Go ahead, check of that one. Here we go. So, doing some serious damage now, this GG Green. Two reds, not dead either, alive. It was my first choice, so I'll stick with it. Uh, a couple of maggots in a window. Only a few, oh, something fell out, like that. A few in there, and you just want to cap them off with your mix. It's got your microbes in, casters, and a few other maggots. And that is what's doing damage at the minute. So, Double red, a nice compact window where you're mixing it. Right, let's get another one. So that one's been at 159 for an indication pretty much straight away on that tip. There's a few little rattles and because I'm chucking out, feeders it's a deck. There we go. Let's see if that one's on. Uh, oh, it is on. Okay, so now I'm getting bites quite quickly. I've just loaded up my uh, window feeder with just my mix. No loose offerings of maggots. Extra. So there's a few in here. So now I'm getting bites often. What I don't want to be doing is increasing the um, loose feed rate that's out there. So obviously fish are feeding. So now I want to be going out with just my base mix in here making sure that this falls amongst whatever they're feeding on right now. So I'm going to chuck out now and uh, 
we'll see if we can get a quick one. Okay, so that's out. Stop watch on. So my feet is at deck, and I want to tighten up to it. So a rod on my rest. And I just want to be taking up that slack until I'm direct to my feeder. So about there, look. So that one's been out there just over eight minutes. Oh, that one's cute. Small knot there. Getting little rattles on tip, you know, if it's like small perch or little roach or what have you. Big, big fish just seem to grab and get a good old tug, and they're just gone. You keep getting odd little rattle here and there. That was quite a positive knock then that I just had. Oh, it is on. Oh, spot on. That one's on. Some nice little skimmer, that one. That'll do. So that's the next one in. So, 14 seconds on clock. Just put it in, tightened up to it. Uh, with that one, I threw in a few loose maggots in window and then catch off in the mix again. Uh, different to what I did before, but I think before I waited just a bit longer for a buy than what I had done on two previous chucks. So I've changed back. And hopefully this will fill that feeding gap that I didn't put in beforehand. Uh, method of my madness, but it's just keeping that extra loose feed trickling in. So uh, we'll see how far, you know, see how long it goes on for, and then if it becomes a, a common trend, that we in sort of pockets of bites, then that'll be a method that I'll stick to. Uh, but yeah, mini tin so far. Yeah, so the other ones are really quick, sort of print rod on rest after tightening up to it and it was just nodding straight away. So uh, hopefully I can keep a few feed efficient area and I don't even have to bother about that long line. Whilst ever I'm getting indications like this on a short line, I'll stick to a short line, I'll never move. If it dies off and I've got two or three chucks without even an indication, then I'll print probably a couple more pockets of feed and then I'll go on a long line and sit, sit that out for a minimum an hour. If no signs on that for that entire first hour, then I'll come back. If I start getting bites or indications on long line, I'll stay on my long line. Welcome little roach that one, but it's uh, definitely a time filler. Lovely fish. Right, so after that little roach, and I've, I have started going like little more little plucks than I have anything. On bites before, I've had sort of three bream in a row, and they've just anchored rod all the way round, and it's been really positive. And then I've had after that little plucks and little sort of pings at line, and probably small fish plucking away up bait. What I'm going to do is, which I'm a firm believer of, uh, micros is I'm going to chuck some more micros in that mix and hopefully I'll start introducing them and that will keep them bream growing about a bit more. So I'll just give that a mix up and that should help me on my next couple. Um, again, I've got my maggots here, but underneath here, I've still got a pure base mix. I can uh, add to it, I can change it, I can start fresh if I need to. It just seems having one mix that I can't really tailor and do what I, need, I like with. So having having that there and just introduce what I need whenever I need it, it's perfect. Because like I say, it's the fish tell me what I need to do. So, oh, I've not started it. Put that fish on. Just start on my stopwatch. Oh, actually, I think battery's just gone. No. But it looks like it's bream o'clock anyway. That one on. Yeah, that one's on. Another bream.
so far. We've got about six bream and a roach. Uh, new rod for you. Uh, fishing at 20 meter. Nice and simple. Window feeder. Uh, double red on hook, not dead, alive. Bring a few micros into the mix. I've just added a few micros in actually, a few more, and it's sort of picked up a bit. It's gone round with a big bream on it straight away. Uh, a couple of casters and a few loose maggots in the mix as well, so constantly keeping feed trickling in, but not enough to fill them up and then move on. So just, just enough to try and regulate how long I can keep them there for, uh, and that seems to be paying off. But the bite seems to be coming quite quick, so that one's been in 1 minute 11. It's had a small shiver on tip straight away, so we're well at the minute. So it's a cold day, I think it's 4 degrees. Um, wind's sort of calmed down a bit now, so it feels like it's warmed up, but it's not. It's just actually got less windy. Uh, so, for all me winter essentials on, from that's on. I'm sit down for a few more. But now, lovely place. Absolutely stunning. Fish are immaculate, by the way. Uh, I've been here plenty of times in the past, just never... Never go on a peg like I have done today. It just got me, got me gear out and just had a good go at it. But I've not even touched my long line yet. So I've got a long line clipped about 50 odd metre. I've not even gone nowhere near it yet. In fact, I've not even picked that rod up. So I'm just going to stay on my short line while I've still got plenty of bikes coming. Plenty of fish there, getting loads of activity between bikes. And um, yeah, so far so good. So we'll see how we get on. Hopefully, can uh, winkle a few more out. And as well, guys, the fishing does go a bit quiet. And you've got some of these beautiful things in your peg. Don't be afraid to just chuck them a couple of maggots. I'd say, creeping up to the 15 minute mark, and not had a single sign on that one, not even a liner, which I was going to say is normally a good thing and normally a bad thing. Uh, it can be either either, depending on what fish you've got in your peg. So my stop wash is on its last legs. Keeps uh, dying on me. So I had to go to trusty old G-Shock. So a minute and 27. Small fish, we're in. There we are, another small fish, but well, fish of the fish. So, again, double red on hook. Just want to pinch a few of them in there. Actually, got micro pellets in the mix as well. So, like I said before, that'll keep any local fish grubbing about. That's in there, double red. 
and uh, that'll just be recharging that swim every time it goes in now. So plenty of plenty of mix in there, and then a few loose maggots in back. Go for another one. Yeah, it is. That one's on. Very dreamy again. Another one. Awesome fishing. There's another absolute stonker that. Another one on. That is that. Time we on. Five minutes to do it, I think that one. We got my first knock on it. I have come here for some of these massive perch and the biggest bloody crocodile has just come up and snatched what's probably my personal best perch. Oh, nightmare. But that's him hanging on to it anyway. It's going both out of will do, but oh man, he had net under the perch and he went to net for it. Oh, absolute nightmare. He's moving that way, look. I'm probably going to lose both, but I gave it a good shot every bloody time well that pike did me out of my fish and me up length i think whenever we are on bank we end up encountering all sorts of wildlife I think it's important that we stay connected with them and uh, you know sometimes it can be a bit of a nuisance we don't really want them in as day like this little fella i've been told what to do with you and, um, and I think it's going to end that way. Sorry, pal. A chunky skimmer. Oh, I love fish that. That's what I'm going to do that one. And it's happened again. I think it was just a little roach this time, not sure, but an absolute crock. Big pike has come up and just devoured it. Ben one, pike one. You let go of me roach. Yes. I think I'll call it a day at that. So I think I went in about eight to ten ish I think before eleven. And it's now five minutes past four at night, so it's been afternoon. So I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna pull out. I don't think I've done too bad, I think I've got a 9 or 10 bream, I think. Most lovely perch. Um, and I managed to scar one of my roach back off my pike, which hasn't come back up yet. So, hopefully, still alive and kicking. Um, so, to conclude it, Revolution baits, GG Green ground bait. Straight, not mixed with anything else. Um, one mix, one pure, and I've just been putting micros odd caster and a few maggots into one and just topping it up where i need to i uh, brought some worms didn't even open them i just thought if things get difficult or or a different sort of approach is needed i could try worms and if you look at that tip there go in a couple of little knocks on the tip there um but luckily, simple approach worked, so double red maggot, not dead, didn't bother killing him, I thought I'd try him live, and then if the situation is not there we go, right, yeah, another skimmer, that much I know, weren't a skimmer, a little roach to finish on, so, uh, yeah, easy going, boat and braid, medium window feeder uh, a solid one not a caged one and just a simple mix uh, i said 54 centimeter earlier but it's actually a 50 centimeter hook length with a pr434 on it uh, 20 meters so bottom it's shelf you just come round here when you were telling me about it so it contours with this it goes out quite steep and then it just drops off like a cliff face 
we're 20 meters out and my target has been that peg there uh, and i'm on peg 23 at this as well so right, i'm gonna wrap up and uh, probably get a quick shot of my fish as well so there you have it nice simple session i think i've done probably about 18 pound of bream a few roach so yeah, i was looking forward to getting some of these big perch and the only one i had got took by a pike so but awesome if you come get a platform unless you've got long legs on your box um, and also some chesty waders the uh, fishing here is incredible to say it's fishing difficult at minute at match weights have been like sort of high teens mid 20s it's uh it's fishing really well so anyone local into feeder fishing definitely get yourself down here and come and have a go i dare say even we just an open-ended feeder uh two three foot hook length size 18 16 hook um we just sort of just traditional methods really just maggot pellets ground bait you're going to catch fish so uh, yeah, Revolution Baits GG Green with some sea nut micro pellets in, pre-soaked and then added in. A few casters and maggots, say so I broke worms, not bothered using them. But uh, definitely not to be ignored for future visits anyway, that's for sure. But another good session, I'll see you at the next one. I fish often, brand new pole just copped it. Got options, could cast that worm like Robin. I'm watching, hit it hitting on top, I'm popping. Hit the pads around and I'm frogging. Bring home the bacon, real hogs in.